Welcome, I'm Christine, and today I'd like to chat about a few of the techniques I use um, for quick and easy uh, sketches uh, when I'm out in the field drawing, like drawing a leaf uh, in the autumn. So the first and easiest is uh, pencil sketching. And here's an example of a leaf in pencil. And so uh, it's basically just using a, a mechanical pencil. You can start lightly and then go a little darker and a little darker. So you have a range in values. And um, so I just sketched this leaf just like this with a simple pencil. Okay, so that's the easiest technique to start with. The next technique is ink. And there are a couple different kinds of ink pens, uh, permanent and uh, water soluble. And this is a permanent one. And uh, you can use ink in a variety of ways. You can use uh, just plain line or cross hatching or stippling. But the simplest technique is just similar to the pencil I just showed you, where you're just basically making an outline uh, in pen. Um, although it's nice to also vary the, the, the width of the pen uh, to give it some, uh, some character. So I have some thicker veins uh, and some thicker uh, edges here in the lobes. And then I've been, uh, had a very light uh, touch with the smaller veins and with adding these uh, little tiny, tiny, tiny spines that you probably can't see on the edge of each leaf. All right, so that is using permanent ink pen. Another technique I like to use is a soft pencil that can be easily blended with a blending stump or tortillion. So here's an example of using that. And basically you just uh, take the pencil, uh, either held, holding it upright like this for the edges or holding it overhand on the side to get uh, a larger area more quickly. And then it can be blended with this stomp like this. And you can blend it in some areas and leave it unblended in others for a variety of effects. Uh, this is a really nice effect uh, for animal uh, fur as well. One problem though with using this in the field is that uh, this does tend to smear. So you would wanna be uh, careful with it in your uh, sketchbook. Next, we'll move on to using water-soluble pencil. Certain pencils, like these Derwent sketching pencils, come in a variety of darknesses. This one is an 8B dark wash. And what is nice about these is that you can use them uh, just plain like this, or you can put in an area of value, either over uh, overhand like this or upright and then you can wet them with a brush and in the field I use these water brushes they're actually filled with water and so that makes the value much darker and you can leave it uh, dry in some areas and wet it in other areas for a variety of effects. So here I've used this on this leaf. It looks almost identical to using the pencil with the blending stomp that I showed you previously, although it's uh, less prone to smearing uh, than this one is, although it does smear to some extent. Okay, next up, water-soluble pens. Now these are really fun. Uh, pens usually don't say 
um, on the cover if they're water soluble or not like your uh, permanent ink pens. A permanent pen uh, often will say that it's uh, waterproof. So you can look for that, India ink waterproof. But water soluble pens are a little bit harder to, to find. Um, I love this Pilot Razor Point uh, with this yellow tip. And um, you can use it like the pencil, uh, water soluble pencil, uh, in the same way. So you can either do lines or cross hatching or stippling or just a, a nice area of value. And then you can wet it with the water pen again. And you can wet uh, just certain areas or the whole thing. And then once the ink is on your brush, uh, you can actually use it some more. It will continue to have ink on it. So that is the technique I used for this uh, oak leaf, the water soluble pen. Moving on to one more type of water soluble medium, water soluble colored pencils. Now not all colored pencils are water soluble. You need to look for the, the brand. And one of my favorite brands are these Derwent ink tents and they come in a really nice uh, thick lead so you can quickly uh, add um, the, the pencil on. So what I did with this is I layered a lot of colors and that is the key, uh, really one of the keys to making uh, colored pencils look realistic uh, and not look um, like crayons. So I saw I observed all of the, the different colors in this lit leaf. There are some greens in the middle. There are some uh, yellows, some reds, and some purples. And so that's what I used here. And uh, so I um, lightly added those, the very light touch, and sort of variegated where I put them. So they were overlapping in some areas and, and not in others. So this kind of idea. And then again with the water brush, I wet them. And you'll notice that the values get darker and richer. So this one has already dried and I noticed that it's still a little bit uh, more pale than the original. So if I wanted to darken it, um, I would have to let this dry uh, before I went in there again and put some more layers on. <clears throat> I'd say this leaf could use uh, more of this uh, purple and maybe even the brown. And so I would go in there and uh, add that wherever I wanted to here. Giving it a richer tone. And then darken it. So colored pencils are, water soluble colored pencils that is, are, are easy to, to modify. And they're very colorful and beautiful. Of course, the only problem I find with having colored pencils are there are so many of them uh, that can get lost uh, in the grass, especially if you're out in the field. So my last technique, and probably my favorite technique, is using watercolors. And again, they would have an advantage over the colored pencils in that you just have one palette and one brush and you're not going to lose them in the grass. So 
Uh, for this example, I did a very wet in wet technique and I, I really love working that way. I'll show you here on the back, or no, no I won't. Um, I'll just show you. I'll show you on the side where I did before. Okay, so uh, often with watercolors, it's good to start with your, your lightest color. And then you can just continue to add dropping in bits of color and they bleed together very beautifully. So I started with this gamboge and I added this uh, Windsor red and then we have some uh, magenta in here. And I also added some of this burnt umber. Or no, sorry, burnt sienna. That's what this is. I took my burnt umber out. There's the burnt umber. Okay. And so I would layer that and then again I would let it dry and if I felt like it had dried too pale which is often um, a problem with watercolors is that it's it's hard to get a dark enough value you might want to go over it a few times but that's perfectly fine to do uh, after the watercolor is dry so uh, again just like with the color pencil I just showed you uh, this watercolor is a little bit more uh, pale than the the rich leaf uh, so I could now that it's dry go back in there and add some I'd say some warmth probably this um, this uh, magenta here and so I would go around and just add that wherever I wanted to again kind of staying loose I like to use the side of my brush to some extent So you can, you don't get any big points. And since it's hard to use the side like this, I would turn my painting over so that I could continue to use the brush on the side, getting a lot of pigment in there in a broad area. I love this wet in wet technique where the colors just blend seamlessly together. Makes it look more realistic, I think. Okay. So there we have it. Some of my favorite techniques to use out in the field. Let me show you one more time. Got pencil, water soluble pencil, water soluble pen, a pencil with a blending stomp. Water soluble colored pencils. And watercolors. So I hope this will give you some ideas about uh, what you can use in the field. And um, get on out there and get sketching. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.